please remain standing for our national anthem performed by High Point University's Takata Tones. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a privilege for all of us at High Point University to welcome on this graduation Saturday a distinguished American, an accomplished businessman, and a leader extraordinaire. We, of course, aim to inspire our students each year by bringing highly successful world-class speakers to our campus. This platform, over the last five years, hosted men and women of great fame in politics, in law, in the arts and sciences, including Rudy Giuliani, Her Majesty Queen Noor, Bill Cosby, Chief Justice Clarence Thomas, and astronaut Buzz Aldrin. This campus has featured dozens of internationally known personalities, like President George Bush, President Bill Clinton, publisher Steve Forbes, author Tom Friedman, and many more. And today, it is my honor to present to you Mr. Motar Kent, who is chairman of the board and chief executive officer of the Coca-Cola Company. Incidentally, today is the 124th birthday of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, as you know, is the world's largest beverage company with 500 brands and operations in more than 200 countries, employing some 700,000 people and generating revenues of over $32 billion annually. Mr. Kent is, of course, the man at the helm. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in economics from Hull University in England and a Master of Science degree in administrative sciences from London City University. He is a fellow of the Foreign Policy Association. He's a member of the Business Roundtable. He's a director of the Special Olympics and he's chairman of the U.S. Asian Business Council. He joined the Coca-Cola Company in Atlanta in 1978 and has held a variety of marketing and operations roles throughout his career, including general manager of Coca-Cola in Turkey and in Central Asia, president of the company's East Central Europe division, and senior vice president of Coca-Cola International with responsibility in 23 countries. Mr. Kent served as president of the Coca-Cola International Company through most of 2006. He was responsible for operations outside of North America until his appointment as president and chief operating officer of the corporation, overseeing all operations of the business, including bottling investments. Last year, he also became chairman of the board of directors. A distinguished business career and a journey of extraordinary leadership indeed. Now, Mr. Kent, let me introduce to you some 200 outstanding faculty members and administrators who commit themselves daily to ensure that this is an extraordinary university. Let me introduce to you, sir, some 700 graduates who labored long and hard to arrive at this important day. And then I give you thousands more on this morning, family members, trustees, alumni, friends, who have gathered here to rejoice in our graduates' achievements. 
and then, of course, to hear your message. We welcome you, sir, to the campus of High Point University. And on this morning, we present to you our highest recognition for leadership, the Excellence in Leadership Award. It reads, High Point University, the Board of Trustees, upon recommendation of the faculty, hereby confers upon Motar Kent, Chairman of the Board and Chief Executive Officer of the Coca-Cola Company, the Excellence in Leadership Award, with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, given under the seal of the university at High Point, North Carolina, this eighth day of May, 2010. And Dr. Carol, our provost, and I would like to present this to, doc, to uh, Mr. Kent, and would you please help me welcome our featured speaker on this morning, Mr. Motar Kent. Thank you for that so much, President Cobain. Esteemed faculty, Board of Trustees, honored class of 2010, proud friends and families. I'm truly deeply honored uh, to be with you on such a momentous occasion. I should also mention that I owe this special honor, this special opportunity to a good friend and partner of the Coca-Cola Company, Dr. Tom Haggai. Dr. Tom, as you know him, many of you know him as Dr. Tom, is a longtime member of High Point University's Board of Trustees. He's here today with his lovely wife, Burren. Thank you, Dr. Tom, and um, I'm glad I listened to your wise counsel, and I'm really proud to be here. Could there be a more inspired setting than this, a beautiful spring morning, a gorgeous campus, and the anticipation of an exciting new chapter opening in so many young lives. Class of 2010, this is your day. Celebrate it, relish it, and never ever forget it but not before thanking your parents, guardians, and members of your family that are here today. Your success is indeed the result, a result of their great success, of your parents, your family's great success in raising, nurturing such outstanding young women and men like yourselves. So therefore, if I could just ask all parents, all families, members, please to rise. Can you, not the students, please, can you all, can I ask all parents to get up, please? Please rise. Class of 2010, please join me in congratulating your parents. Thank you. And I can relate to all of the thoughts, parents and families that are swirling in your heads today. Um, just three short years ago, I was sitting in a setting just similar to this as a proud parent watching my own daughter graduate from a university up in the Northeast from Tufts University just three years ago. And two years from now, touch wood, again, I hope to sit there as a proud father watching my son graduate uh, from Columbia University up in the North. Today, parents, family members, your loved ones have accomplished something that is rare and honorable indeed, a degree from this great institution, High Point University. This university community and the classic liberal arts education today's graduates have received will serve all of us well in the years ahead. All of us. Class of 2010, I am convinced there is no better trait that you can bring, all of you can bring into your life and career than the passion to learn how to learn. Something High Point University has taught you, I believe, so well. It is now estimated that the rate of human knowledge is doubling about every five to 10 years. 
a huge sea change from what it used to be. So for many of you, it's very likely that by your, all the graduates here, for many of you, it's likely that by your 30th birthday, you will probably be working in industries and professions, engaged in professions that probably don't even exist today. No question that the world that all of you are coming into, entering, is radically different than the one that your parents and I stepped into years ago. Back when I was in college, the Beatles had not yet broken up. Bono, Bono was an American pop singer married to a lady named Cher. <laughs> the guys who started the entrepreneurs who started Dell and eBay were toddlers, just toddlers. And the founders of Google, Facebook, MySpace were not even born yet when I was a student, when I was graduating. Okay? I'm dating myself, but you get the point. You're also entering a world that is somewhat paradoxical. On the one hand, tremendous, enormous challenges, but on the other hand, breathtaking, truly breathtaking opportunities that exist. In the next few years to come, only about a decade from now, your generation, that are all of you that are graduating, will lead about a billion people around the world into middle class. A billion people that are going to come and emerge and come into middle class. You are all going to be leading that. And despite the economic troubles that we have experienced in the recent past, believe me, though, that those economic troubles will pass and probably will pass sooner than you think. Despite all of this turmoil that has gone on in the world in the past year, in the next 10 years again, the world is going to get $20 trillion richer. The world is going to become more urban, people flocking to cities for a better life, better future. And in fact, between now and 2020, again, 10 years, the world will be adding, adding an urban population that will be greater than the combined size of Charlotte and the Triad area every 18 days to its population, an urban, urbanization rate that is unheard of. New lifestyles, new demographic patterns will paint a portrait of a world that is younger, more youthful, a world that is living longer, that's more affluent, a world that is more mobile for sure and certainly better informed with a mindset like never before. So, what does all of this mean for you, class of 2010? To put it simply, we need your leadership, your ability to make a positive difference each and every single day from this moment on. Over the course of my career, uh, as, as Dr. Cobain mentioned, I've had the good fortune, a wonderful fortune of working on every single inhabited uh, continent in the world and I've been introduced to hundreds of different cultures I've met some truly remarkable people like Dr. Cobain and great faculty counselors that make up this wonderful academic community here and I've noticed I've noticed a common thread that runs through all great leaders Great leaders have, have an uncanny ability to adapt, to be flexible, to embrace new things and to make them better. Embrace new things and make them better. Think about all your own experiences here at High Point University. Think about the changes that you've seen, the improvements, the wonderful new facilities, the growing en enrollment, all in such a short period of time. And that does not happen, that does not happen simply by chance or in a vacuum. That's the result, combined result of committed leadership. All of the great leaders I've met throughout my 33 years career around the world 
are tireless always in their persistence and unwavering in their beliefs and values. They possess quiet confidence, a strong belief in themselves when they look in the mirror, and also a strong belief in their communities, in their greater communities. We've all heard the story of Abe Lincoln, born into poverty, faced, faced with defeat throughout his life, losing eight elections, twice failing in business, suffering a nervous breakdown, and countless other setbacks. Now let me tell you the story of someone you probably have never heard of before. He came from the South, from the rural South, studied medicine, chemistry, and pharmacy at college. After college, he established his wholesale retail drug business. His new career was interrupted by the outbreak of the Civil War, enlisted in the Army, was wounded. After the war, resumed civilian life in a land that was undergoing massive social, economic, and political changes. In fact, it was arguably the most turbulent, probably, era in American history. Determined to thrive, to adapt and thrive in this new world, he started no less than 18 different businesses in just over a decade, almost, almost two a year. Only a few of those 18 businesses were modestly successful. But despite his many setbacks, he had an, an incredible curiosity, insatiable curiosity. He was what I would call constructively discontent, never satisfied with status quo, always, always strove to improve and learn from failures from experiences, never ab abandoning his values. Above all, he had an incredible faith in a better tomorrow. So maybe it's only appropriate that on this very day, as Dr. Cobain mentioned, May 8th, 124 years ago, he struck it big, very big. In his little lab in downtown Atlanta, he mixed up a batch of natural ingredients, condensed them into a syrup, and took that syrup down to the local pharmacy where he accidentally added sparkling water to it. And by now, you think, you, I think you know where I'm going with this story. May 8th is the birthday of Coca-Cola, a day that Dr. John Pemberton, the man I spoke of, graduated from a fledgling chemist, a not so successful businessman to one of the greatest inventors. He, he took his persistent will to achieve and created the wor world's most beloved beverage and the best known brand. And now I'm not suggesting that all of you rush out and buy chemistry sets and try to invent the next Coca-Cola graduate class. I don't need any further competition. <laughs> but I do believe the intellectual curiosity and values that you have groomed here at High Point University will be your lifeline, lifeline, in a rapidly changing world, just as they were for Dr. Pemberton in the years following the Civil War. So too, importantly, so too will the relationships you've established, nurtured here, and the lessons you've learned in stretching, in stretching yourself far beyond your comfort zones. What you are earning here today is actually much more than just a degree or a diploma. You've earned the passport, the entree, into a lifelong community of friends, of mentors, counselors, partners, colleagues, an extraordinary diverse community, I may add. Having said that, let me quickly offer three final bits of advice this wonderful spring morning. First, hold those relationships that I've just talked about that you've nurtured. Hold them deep, close to you. Let them serve you as models for the way you engage with all the new people that you are going to meet in your life going forward. Relationships are going to be at the heart of your future success. They were for, my, for me. 
Second, never lose your ability to move through different cultures and adapt to change. The diversity of the, the wonderful diversity of our world is represented right here on this campus. The state and national flags that I saw that line the promenade actually tell that incredible, wonderful story. So your ability, class of 2010, to work across cultures, geographic borders, differing points of view will be essential. And third, give, please, as much back to the world as you take. If you can give a bit more, that's better. Our world grows more interdependent every single day. We are only, as individuals, only as strong as the sustainable communities we all help support. And the great diversity of this wonderful institution with this tradition of community engagement and its mission of seeking tolerance, seeking truth, will serve you well in the years to come, for sure. When I look at all of you, the class of 2010, when I listen to the great faculty and leaders of this university, I can't help but think the future of our world is going to be in great hands. You came to High Point for a great education. With this gift, you are all now ready to reach to many, many highest points. Don't ever let anything get in your way. So my sincere congratulations to all of you, to all your parents and family, and to this great institution. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood, thy liberty. Beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God man thine every flow, confirm thy soul in self control, thy liberty in law. May I ask all of you to stand and we will proceed with the recessional. Again, congratulations to all our graduates. <laughs>